Well, 2017 is finally over. And I hope you guys had a good New Year's Day. I hope you guys had your fill of drinking, alcohol, partying, or just watching the fireworks. I myself am proud to say that I slept through the New Year's, completely just slept through it all. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about Trump's first year in review. And in this video, I'll go over all the good things that President Trump has done in his first year as President of the United States of America. Now, this isn't going to be a complete list of all the things that President Trump has done in his first year. These are just some of the things that I can recount that he has done. Some things I agree with, some things I don't. So let's go ahead and just get started. Starting with number 15, pulling out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. One of the first thing that President Trump did was signed an executive order on Monday, January 23rd, in the beginning of 2017, that formally withdrew the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. Though, as you may know, the Trans-Pacific Partnership was a horrible deal for American workers, so much so that even many Democrats in office and Democrats around the country heavily disagreed with the TPP and wanted America to have nothing to do with it. So one of Trump's first actions was to do just that, pull out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership that would essentially destroy many American workers while benefiting many foreign jobs and workers. Number 14, Trump's travel ban. A heavily controversial order that Trump wanted to succeed was Trump's travel ban, initially stopping immigration from seven majority Muslim countries that are high risk of producing radical Islamists and terrorists. Many liberals across the country were heavily triggered by this. Since American safety is not on one of their priority lists, they heavily disagreed with Trump's travel ban and wanted it to be removed, and they tried to do just that. The 19th Circuit Courts filed an injunction against the travel ban and caused a nuisance for months to come. Even though Trump got his travel ban and the travel ban was approved to pass from the Supreme Court, many liberals are still very, very upset over this. Number 13, trying to repair relations with Russia. During the campaign trail and after Donald Trump won the election, the liberal hysteria blew up about Russian collusion and the President of the United States. Believing that President Trump had colluded with Russia in order to win the election was a falsehood produced by the Democratic National Committee in order to cover up for their WikiLeaks dumps about their candidate Hillary Clinton and to reflect conversation and scrutiny about their wrongdoings and corruption. The Russian collusion bullshit has gone so deep that it actually started an investigation that has been ongoing for many, many months now. Though many liberals are so desperate for something to impeach Trump with, the Russian collusion one isn't going to win favor, nor will it prove any wrongdoing on Trump's part. But that being said, Trump has tried to heal relations with the Russian state to avoid all-out Cold War 2.0 from beginning, but the liberals and Democrats in office make that extremely difficult. Number 12, bombing a Syrian airbase. One of the things I disagree with Donald Trump on is that his bombing of a Syrian airbase. Back in April of 2017, President Donald Trump struck a Syrian airbase in an effort to show Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria that he means business and he's not like President Obama. Though I heavily disagree with this move and believe that we have no business in the Middle East and we should let Middle Eastern affairs deal out on their own, the only good thing is that this airbase was an empty airbase and there were no casualties. But nonetheless, I still disagree with bombing any part of Syria or getting involved in the Middle East at all because we've been there for the last two decades and it has done nothing but ruin us and ruin them. Number 11, transgender bathroom policy. On February 22nd, 2017, President Trump rescinded protections for transgender students that had allowed them to use bathrooms corresponding with their gender identity. Many liberals were very triggered by this, but I also see this as a win, since this law or regulation could allow potentially predatorial males into little girls' bathrooms, unchecked, unvented, and allowed to do whatever they want in those bathrooms. I for one would not want a 40-year-old man going to the bathroom 
with my young daughter. But I mean, I'm not a liberal cock, so I can't understand the liberal viewpoint on this. Number 10. Cutting regulations. President Trump promised to kill two regulations for every one he imposed. So far, he has over-delivered 11-fold. He has scotched 22 new rules for every one he has inflicted. Some 1,500 such regulations have been erased or postponed. At a December 14th Roosevelt Room ceremony, Trump used scissors to cut a Rimson ribbon beside stacks of regulations that towered over him. He said the never-ending growth of red tape in America has come to a sudden, screeching, and beautiful halt. Number 9. Forcing out Obama-era prosecutors. This is something that every single president does when they are elected into office. But since the left took such a defense of Trump doing this, it has to be on this list. Pointless and stupid, since like I said, every president that's ever been in elected into office has forced out the previous era of prosecutors appointed by their previous president. Number 8. Cutting Unnecessary Programs Donald Trump has claimed that he is a true conservative and not a huge spender. And with all the things he's done in an entire year, nothing gives me a reason to doubt him on his conservatism. One of them being cutting useless programs that just cost up American taxpayers money for no reason. Programs such as Community Developed Block Grants, the Weaponization Assistance Program, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, the National and endowment for the arts and the corporation for public broadcasting many of those programs you have never even heard of so i agree with trump on cutting their budgets and i believe he should even go further and cut even more budgets and regulations and bureaus that are essentially useless number seven refusing to shake angela merkel's hand again many liberals and democrats flipped out on trump from doing this but i don't see this as a negative i see this as a complete positive since angela merkel is everything that we are fighting against when it comes to globalism, censorship, anti-white propaganda, and anti-traditionalism propaganda. Angela Merkel has no respect for her people, nor her people's culture, essentially by letting in millions of refugees that only kill, rape, and commit horrible crimes that puts Germany at rank 37 of the most safest countries in the world, meaning it has had a significant drop in safety since the refugees came in. So I applaud Trump for not shaking this woman's hand. She's basically like Hillary 2.0, but just a German version. Number 6. Not signing the Paris Accord deal. Many liberals are very triggered by this because they fall into the category of believing that climate change is a man-made event. Though I have spoken about my thoughts on climate change and how I believe it is actually real, but it is not man-made and is just a natural occurrence on our planet and there is nothing we can do about it. The Paris Accord deal was essentially giving billions of United States taxpayer money to third world countries countries in order to build solar panels and windmills, which is complete bullshit, because all that money was either going to be siphoned off to billionaires, corporations, drug lords and warlords in the third world, and people like Elon Musk. Number 5. Booming Economy President Trump promised on the campaign trail that he would get the economy back rolling and get the economy back on growth, and he has done just that. In his first year in office, the economy is now at a 3.3% growth rate something that liberals and the democratic pundits and economists from all over said was impossible. Number four, getting NATO to finally pay. Over the many years, many presidents have failed to get the NATO countries and NATO allies to pay their fair share in security, and many of these countries have gotten away with not contributing to the NATO allies or NATO program. Since many previous presidents of the United States have been very weak and inefficient in getting anything comprehensive done. President Trump has changed all of that and got the NATO countries to actually pay up and pay their fair share. Number three, made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. President Trump declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel and announced that America would now move its diplomatic mission there from Tel Aviv as soon as construction allows. This enforces the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995. Jubilant Israeli officials just announced that they will build a rail station near 
near the Western Wall after the president, thus making the Trump train a real thing. Number two, border wall funding. Many liberals are very triggered by Trump's border wall and have doubted that he could ever get it done. But just in his first year in office, he has pumped out prototypes of the wall and got Congress to finally fund it. So I think the liberals and Democrats should finally realize that Trump is not someone they really want to doubt. And number one, tax reform. One of the best things that Trump has done this entire year is give millions and millions and potentially billions of dollars in tax cuts to millions of people across the United States of America. Something Americans have been dying for is a tax cut and tax break. Something that not even President Obama could accomplish in his eight years in office. And a matter of fact, President Obama actually raised everybody's taxes. But give it to liberals and Democrats all over the United States that still won't appreciate what Trump has done and still won't have anything good to say about him. Even though they're saving potentially hundreds or thousands of dollars on their taxes, they will still not give him kudos for this. And that's it for this list. But there's some other things that I want to discuss. Democrats have resisted Trump and his agenda at virtually every turn. They are fresh out of ideas and possesses no vision. Their relentless allegations about Team Trump's collusion with Russia has admitted to a collective hallucination. Even worse, in a textbook case case of psychological projection, the left's Russian gate charges mask, the real Russian collusion seen to date, Team Hillary's purchase of a bongoist anti-Trump dossier developed with Russian sources along with her notorious involvement in the Uranium One deal. The transaction secured for the Kremlin 20% of America's uranium supply in exchange for $145 million in donations to the Clinton Foundation. All told, the Democrats are the party of no. Democrats will have real trouble next November telling voters how Donald Trump triggered what Nancy Pelosi calls Armageddon even as their taxes drop, their wages climb, and bonuses checks swell their bank accounts. We're going to win so much, candidate Trump said in May 2016. You're going to be so sick and tired of winning. You're going to come to me and go, please, we can't win anymore. None of these incredible gains has made anyone ill or exhausted yet. Still, thanks to President Trump's leadership and the support of the Republican Congress, 2017 turned out to be one hell of a winning year. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys. Number 12. Bombing a Syrian Air Base are you looking for? Shut the fuck up. After all I've done for you? God damn it, shut up.